In a groundbreaking discovery, astronomers have directly observed the planet being swallowed by its own star. This is the first time such an event has been recorded in astronomical history. The star lies around 12,000 light years away in the constellation Aquila, and the planet it ate was Jupiter like. This observation is special because it's a glimpse into the future of our solar system. As the Sun approaches the end of its life cycle and transforms into a red giant, it will expand to such an extent that it is expected to engulf the inner planets, including Mercury, Venus, and even Earth. So this discovery can contribute to a more precise forecast of the future of our solar system. But the question is that how did astronomers make this spectacular discovery? How are they so sure that it's a star eating a planet instead of some other catastrophic event in space? Finally, and most importantly, why is this discovery so critical to astronomy? To understand the discovery, it's important to know one basic concept of the evolution of stars. A sun-like star spends the majority of its life in the main sequence phase, where a delicate balance is maintained. In the main sequence, the inward force of gravity is counterbalanced by the outward pressure generated from the nuclear fusion of hydrogen into helium in its core. However, once the hydrogen supply in the core is depleted, this nuclear fusion ceases disrupting the equilibrium. The next nuclear reaction in the core involves fusing helium into carbon. It cannot begin instantly because the temperature required for that is 10 times more than the current temperature of the helium core. Consequently, gravity's unopposed pull compresses the core. This core collapses, increasing the star's temperature, triggering the fusion of hydrogen in its outer plasma layers. Meanwhile, as the core continues to shrink, it initiates the fusion of helium into heavier elements, further escalating the temperature and the energy production in the outer layers. This energy surge produces an outward pressure that propels the expansion of the star's outer layers, inflating its size considerably. This stage marks the red giant phase in the star's life cycle. As the star swells, its surface area increases by a factor of 100 to 1,000, leading to a significant drop in its temperature. The star's energy is now spread over a larger area, resulting in the star emitting light towards the red end of the spectrum. That's why we call it a red giant. Stars with a mass ranging from 0.3 to 8 times that of our Sun follow this evolutionary path, including our own Sun. Predictive models of stellar evolution suggest that as the Sun transitions into its red giant phase, its expansion could potentially reach the orbit of Mars, leading to the engulfment of Mercury, Venus, and Earth. Astronomers were curious to know whether this prediction was correct. It was important because such an observation would also contribute to validating our models of how stars evolve but looking for such an event is quite challenging. That's because there are many catastrophic events involving compact stars and black holes that could look similar to a star swallowing its planet. So astronomers had to be very careful. It was theorized that as a star expands and swallows a planet, it triggers bright mass ejections. Thus, astronomers began their search for unique bursts of visible and infrared light Using data from the Zwicky Transient Facility or ZTF Time Domain Survey, their search led them to a peculiar transient light source now dubbed ZTF SLRN 2020. The acronym SLRN stands for Subluminous Red Nova, a term we'll delve into later, and 2020 denotes the year of the first observation. This light source brightened very quickly in just 10 days and then slowly dimmed over about six months. Interestingly, they noticed it started to get brighter in the mid-infrared light about seven months before the big burst. Mid-infrared refers to the wavelength range of 2500 to 25,000 nanometers. 
This mid-infrared light continued during the burst and lasted for at least 15 months. At one point, about four months after the big burst, the mid-infrared light was 50 times brighter than the visible light. So how did astronomers conclude that they were witnessing a star consuming its planet, rather than another dramatic cosmic event involving a white dwarf, neutron star, or black hole? Well, there were four clues. This event was different from those involving white dwarfs because of how long the burst lasted and how bright it got. Furthermore, no X-ray emission was detected with the Swift telescope, eliminating the possibility of matter accretion by a neutron star or black hole. Additionally, spectroscopic examination of the outburst revealed no atomic emission lines, further confirming the absence of a compact star or a black hole. And finally, the observation of mid-infrared emission suggests the presence of a warm dust shell surrounding the star providing further evidence in support of a star swallowing its planet. Have a look at this figure from the research paper. These images showcase the star in near and mid-infrared light at various stages. A closer inspection reveals a noticeable difference in the star's size between images A and C, indicating its transition into the red giant phase. Next, consider the multicolored light curve of the transient source. This curve displays a peak in light intensity, and more crucially, the magnified section near the peak reveals a swift increase in brightness from a dormant state. These characteristics confirm the collision of a star with another celestial body. Now, the only question that remained was, what is that object? While astronomers had dismissed the scenarios involving a white dwarf, neutron star, or black hole, two other possibilities remained. What if the event was some kind of supernova or the merger of two stars? Clues to this puzzle were found in the light spectrum of the transient source. This spectrum revealed peculiar molecules such as titanium oxide and vanadium oxide as well as traces of carbon monoxide. These molecules can only exist in cool M-type stars or extremely low temperature regions. The infrared emission indicated rapid cooling because infrared light signifies cooler materials, while UV and optical emissions come from hot stellar plasma. However, in a supernova explosion, a star heats up and brightens. Thus, the presence of cool materials and a supernova explosion are contradictory, ruling out the latter. Finally, there remained just one cosmic event that astronomers needed to rule out, a red nova or the collision of two stars. Specifically, they wanted to know if the companion object involved in the event was a star or a planet. The spectral properties of the transient source were very similar to other observed red novae, both within and beyond our galaxy. To further understand the properties of the merging objects, Astronomers conducted additional observations using NASA's Infrared Space Telescope, but what they found was unexpected. The total energy observed in typical red novae was about 1,000 times greater than the energy released by this star since its initial outburst. The relatively low luminosity of ZTF SLRN 2020 could be due to a small amount of hydrogen released during the outburst which was undetectable in follow-up observations by radio telescopes. The submillimeter array and the very large array. This discrepancy in energy release suggested the event was not a red nova after all, considering the energy was one thousandth of that typically seen in star mergers. Astronomers concluded the merging object must be one thousand times smaller than the star. All the pieces of the puzzle finally came together. Astronomers determined that the merging object was a planet, not a star. As the star expanded, the orbiting planet collided with it. Using our solar system as a reference, Jupiter's mass is 1,000th that of the Sun. So, to estimate the mass of the planet, astronomers used Jupiter's mass as a unit. They concluded that the planet involved in the cosmic collision likely had a mass between 0.1 to 10 times that of Jupiter to align with their observations. This type of celestial event, 
where a star engulfs its own planet is now referred to as a subluminous red nova, a term that can informally describe an event less luminous than a typical red nova. But why does this discovery hold such significance in astronomy? The concept of a planet being consumed by its host star during the star's final stages had been hypothesized before. Observing it directly reaffirms that our understanding of stellar evolution is on track. Furthermore, witnessing such an event provides a chilling preview of the Earth's eventual fate. This concludes another episode of the Sunday Discovery series. Recently, astronomers discovered a black hole that flipped its direction and is now pointing at us. If you missed this episode, be sure to catch up on this exciting discovery.